Today we're going to be talking about chemical reactions, and so um, let's get right to it. We're going to have, we have a definition here of a chemical reaction. This is something that's very important to understand, and that is a chemical reaction is going to be a process that leads to the transformation of one set of chemical substances to another. Okay. So um, in chemical reactions, we produce new products. Um, and we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. Chemical reactions are, involve um, electrons. Um, there's going to be um, transfer of electrons or sharing of electrons. And remember, when we have sharing electrons or transferring electrons, we can have bonds um, formed that hold, um, that hold atoms together. And in chemical reactions, we break bonds and we remake bonds. And there's a lot of energy involved with breaking bonds and remaking bonds. Um, sometimes it takes a lot of energy, and sometimes it, um, it gives off a lot of energy. And we'll talk more about that soon. So that's what a chemical reaction is. Chemical reactions typically are hard to reverse, but not always. There's some, some reactions that are easily reversible. So what I want to do now is show you a real quick video of a chemical reaction. OK, what we have here in front of us is we have um, two things. In, we have a test tube that's being shown here, a test tube, and we also have a little gummy bear. Now, in the bottom of this test tube, we have a chemical called potassium chlorate. Potassium chlorate um, has a formula of KClO3. They've heated it up. They've, um, they've allowed it to melt. And now they're going to drop the gummy bear in there. And let's see what happens here when they drop the gummy bear in there. So gummy bear versus potassium chlorate. And it goes. See immediately chemical change occurring, lots of heat being given off, smoke being given off, uh, vapor being given off. That gummy bear will be, never be the same again. Um, so we definitely have a chemical change occurring here, chemical reaction. Okay, so let's get back to it. So that was an example of a chemical reaction, but um, we're going to talk about a chemical equation now that really, that really um, kind of lets us know what's happening at chemical reaction, where the bonds are being broken, where the bonds are being remade. And so we have um, a word equation here, a uh, chemical equation, and it tells us some things. So it says sodium metal is reacted with water to form hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide. And so um, let's, let's write this out using the symbols associated with each one of these things, and then we're going to kind of identify all the parts of this reaction. So um, we'll start off with sodium metal. Sodium metal has a symbol of Na. Um, it's reacted. Anytime we react something um, with something else, we're going to separate those by a plus sign. It's reacted with water, and so we know the formula of water is going to be H2O. Now, it also says it's going to form some, some products. So to separate um, what's reacted and what's formed, and we'll talk about what these guys are talking about, we put an arrow. And this arrow does not read as equals to, it reads um, reacts to form. Or sometimes we say yields as well. Okay, um, So our products are over here on the side. So we have hydrogen gas. Now hydrogen gas is what we call a diatomic molecule. And so there's going to be two of them, H2. And it also tells us that we're going to produce some sodium hydroxide. Now um, we know sodium is Na. Hydroxide is OH. Um, sodium has a 1 plus charge, OH has a 1 minus charge, so we crisscross those charges and we get a formula of NaOH, so I'm going to erase off the charges there. And this is um, a chemical reaction. Now this is what we call an unbalanced chemical reaction. We'll talk about balancing in our next video. Um, but let's identify a few parts of this chemical reaction. Um, once again, on the left hand side over here, the sodium and the water are what we call reactants. These are both reactants, the sodium as well as the water. And on this side, we have the products. We have hydrogen, and we have sodium hydroxide. OK, so these are some basic parts of a chemical reaction. Reactants on the left, products are on the right. Um, now, we don't have states of matter listed here, but we need to know how we list states of matter. So um, let's talk about some of these. So, Example, um, it said above sodium was a metal. Now, anything that's going to be a metal, off, including powders, we're going to call a solid. And the way we illustrate a solid is we usually put a little s in parentheses down below as a subscript like this. This means you have a solid. OK? Um, we had water used. And in this case, water is going to be a pure liquid. So we use a little l for liquid, pure liquids. Um, it told 
told us that hydrogen was a gas. And so gases have a G to illustrate a gas. Okay. I'm going to keep talking about some other things that, that we also need to recognize within um, chemical reactions. If you have um, uh, something that's been dissolved in water, like the sodium hydroxide, would be listed as something that's dissolving in water, and we put a little AQ, which means aqueous. Now what aqueous means is it's been something that's been dissolved in water. So anytime we see the AQ or aqueous dissolved in water. Now, um, a couple other types of um, symbols that we need to be aware of. Um, another, another type of uh, symbol that we need to be aware of is if we have a solid formed in a reaction as a product. Anytime you have a solid form, or most of the time when you have a solid form of reaction as a product, many times what we can say is this is going to be called a precipitate. A precipitate. Now, precipitates can be shown in a couple different ways in a chemical reaction. Let's say, um, let's say in a chemical reaction we form as a product, this um, is lead to chloride. Um, lead to chloride as a product can be shown as just a solid. Now, if it's a solid, that tells us it's a precipitate as a product. Now, we also sometimes will show precipitates as PPT. Um, both of these mean this basically the same thing. It's a solid product formed um, as a result of a couple um, aqueous solutions coming together to produce um, a solid. Um, something else that we can talk about, I'm going to scroll down here a little bit, with respect to um, looking at chemical reactions. Let's say we have a reaction that looks like this. This is a H2O2, which is a hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is this stuff that comes in that brown bottle. You might have some in your house. You know, you fall down and you skin your knee. Um, and uh, you might put some hydrogen peroxide on it to help clean it out. Um, it decomposes um, into water, and it decomposes into oxygen gas. Um, oxygen gas is what um, is said to have a little bit of antiseptic quality. Those are the little white bubbles that form um, when hydrogen peroxide decomposes when you put it on a wound. Um, and water liquid is also formed, helps wash out the wound. So um, this reaction um, is a specific type of reaction. Now. Um, what I, want to, what I want to say is we can make this reaction occur. It doesn't naturally occur super fast. It's a pretty slow reaction. Um, we can use what's called a catalyst. Now, one of the chemicals that we use as a catalyst for this is MnO2. Now, um, this MnO2, this manganese dioxide, is considered, like I said, a catalyst. Now, a catalyst is typically written on top of the arrow, just like I've done that. And catalysts are unchanged. In chemical reactions. So if you see something like that written on top of the arrow, we know it's a catalyst. It's going to help this reaction occur. Um, it, it lowers the activation energy pathway, um, lets the reaction go really quickly. And so that's something that we need to identify as well. Um, this reaction, once again, is not balanced, and we'll talk about balancing in our next video.